Top Gun Maverick is currently setting records at the box office, including becoming the highest global grossing movie of Tom Cruise's entire movie star career. It's safe to say it'll probably be the biggest movie of the summer. In fact, the week of its release, reportedly 2 million U.S. households had revisited the 1986 original on streaming platforms. And although the first Top Gun made a giant mark on cinematic dogfights, there would actually be another aerial combat franchise that started on the silver screen that same year. And that film is Iron Eagle. On this episode of Revisited. Although being overshadowed by Top Gun, Iron Eagle actually came out a few months prior in January of 1986, whereas Top Gun was released that summer. With its similar imagery and obviously having a lower budget, it's easy for general audiences to mistakenly think it was an imitator in the wake of Top Gun's success. I even made that mistake. Sorry? In reality, the aerial warfare would be where the similarities seemingly end. Oh, also all the sweet 80s music. Iron Eagle would actually feature elements more akin to Red Dawn or War Games, where teenagers would find themselves in over their heads facing a military threat and decide to take action. The movie starts with two pilots patrolling the Mediterranean Sea, and one getting shot down over international waters by MiGs from a fictional Arab state that isn't explicitly identified in the film. The pilot is captured and detained by their government set to be tried, charged with encroaching on their borders. The pilot in question is an Air Force colonel named Ted Masters, played by Tim Thomerson, star of the Trancers franchise. And he's the father of our young hero, Doug Masters, played by Jason Gedrick. And possibly the best time capsule of the 80s ever, we're introduced to Doug as he's unjamming the cassette tape that's been stuck in his tape deck, which he uses religiously in this movie, both modifying it to his car and fashioning a leg strap so he can jam out while he's flying. Doug and his friends are the children of AF officers who all reside on the Beecher Air Force Base in California. He also happens to be a civilian pilot, hoping to be accepted into the academy, wanting to follow in his father's footsteps. When news breaks of his father's current situation, the State Department refuses to take any action, thinking this is just a hollow power play. Doug is livid no one is going to try to extract his father. So he and his ragtag group in their Eagle Flying Club gather and plan a risky, off-the-books operation for Doug to get him out himself. The movie was inspired by the real-life hostile relations between the U.S. and Libya in the 80s. Particularly in 1981, where a similar incident happened over the Gulf of Sidra, where the Libyan government claimed territory and accused two U.S. F-14 Tomcats of violating their borders. This incident was adapted into a screenplay by Kevin Elders and the film's director, Sidney J. Fury, who had previously directed Lady Sings the Blues and The Entity and would eventually helm the canon film Superman IV The Quest for Peace. This script, which at the time sported the name Junior Eagle, was turned down by studio after studio, until producer John Wisen, who was the head of 20th Century Fox at the time, gave the script to producer Ron Samuels, who thought it had the spirit of a John Wayne Western. Filming took place in California and Israel. The U.S. Air Force had refused to endorse and participate in the film when it was discovered that there were scenes depicting the teenage protagonists infiltrating and extracting military intel within the Air Force base. They didn't like how lax and easily manipulated the security had looked. Additionally, the plot called for the theft of two aircrafts, which directly violates their policy for film involvement. And because of this, the filmmakers were not permitted to use official U.S. planes for the movie. So to fake it, they used Israeli F-16s and painted them to look like American jets. This would in turn cause a near international incident. As the filming of the air combat scenes took place in Israel, one day, the Israeli Air Force was tasked with striking terrorist targets in Lebanon. A ground controller observed the movie's planes in the air as they were filming and mistook them for some of their planes. 
they then routed these jets to the Lebanon target. They actually got halfway there before ground control realized that they were marked with American insignias and actually filming for the movie. They were called back immediately and narrowly avoided giving the impression that the U.S. had made a preemptive attack. Eventually, Doug realizes he would have to ask for help of some kind, and the character he turns to is pilot-turned-mechanic Colonel Charles Chappie Sinclair, played by the great Louis Gossett Jr. Chappie is based on a real-life general named Daniel Chappie James Jr. This Chappie was a former member of the Tuskegee Airmen, the famous African-American fighter pilots who served in World War II. Chappie James would go on to fly jets in the Korean and Vietnam War and become the first black four-star general in United States history. The movie character Chappie would become the squad leader of the Secret Eagles Flying Club mission and a mentor to Doug. Chappie is a really fun character and injects some humor and heart into the story. I cut off that stuff! As Doug goes over some of the recon with him, Chappie does his best analyzing while shaking his ass to some James Brown. He has a history of educating flyboys and carries the burden with him of knowing too many who have gotten shot down despite being excellent pilots. As he teaches more and more tools of the trade to Doug, he can't help but see his potential and at the same time fear the worst for him. The Eagle Flying Club consists of some familiar faces of the era. You've got Tony, played by Jerry Levine, who most may know as Michael J. Fox's friend Styles from the movie Teen Wolf. Reggie, played by Larry B. Scott, whom you may recognize from Space Camp, Revenge of the Nerds, and Karate Kid. And then Joni, played by Sean E. Smith, later to be seen in Summer School and The Blob. The middle part of the movie shows the kids gathering information and planning for the mission like a teenage Ocean's Eleven. Chappie and Doug would spend most of their time together prepping Doug for his flight into enemy airspace. Doug claims to have logged in more time in a simulator than any pilot on the base, and Chappie knows he needs to experience the real danger of being up there. The tape deck comes into play when Doug pilots Jet, as the music helps him feel the rhythm and timing of the flight. As with Chappie doing his best thinking with James Brown, Doug does his best piloting with 80s rock. It was a fun opportunity to work in some of the movie's soundtrack during some of the dogfights. While not as high profile like the Top Gun soundtrack, here we get some quintessential teen angst and party rock with artists like Queen, Twisted Sister, Adrenaline, King Cobra, and Katrina and the Waves. And speaking of the dogfights, this movie fares well in showing off some damn good aerial action. As stated before, the movie would sport a lower budget than Top Gun, and perhaps if they weren't released so close together, the comparisons wouldn't be as jarring. The movie would go on to rely on miniatures more than Top Gun, and sometimes, especially nowadays with high definition, it's a bit more obvious than you would hope. As well as displaying some questionable rear screen effects. Still, Iron Eagle has some nice variation in its action. An early sequence shows Doug squaring off against a rival named Notcher, played by Michael Bowen, whose own gang features a Cobra Kai member, Rob Garrison. In this sequence, it's a fun twist on the classic trope of teenage racing. Here, Notcher would race Doug in a motorcycle versus plane match, which they dub Running the Snake. The stuntman who flew for the sequence was renowned aerobatic pilot Art Scholl, who had worked on Indiana Jones, The Right Stuff, and Explorers. After working on this movie, he would unfortunately be the victim of a stunt gone wrong, as his plane crashed filming the flat spin sequence for Top Gun later that year. Iron Eagle would go on to gross over $24 million domestically, on an $18 million budget. It would then earn an additional $11 million in home video sales. The critical reception was generally negative, citing how over the top the plot elements were, a lot of suspension of disbelief, and the cheesy dialogue. It's probably on the lower end of the spectrum of fun 80s schlock, but it definitely has its supportive fans. The profit the movie made was even enough to garner a sequel or three. The rest of the Iron Eagle franchise would feature mainly Chappie, with Louis Gossett Jr. reprising his role for every movie. The second movie saw Jason Gedrick returning only for a short scene at the beginning, where they actually killed off Doug Masters, only for them to retcon his death and having him return in Iron Eagle 4, with another actor filling in the role. 
With every sequel, the original writers and director Kevin Elders and Sidney J. Fury would remain involved in some capacity. There are currently no talks of modernizing the franchise, either through sequels, reboots, or streaming series. Iron Eagle may have been overshadowed in the grand scheme of pop culture, but it's still carved out a little corner in the cult hit section of the proverbial video store. And it's still receiving some love today, thanks to Johnny Lawrence and Cobra Kai keeping its legacy alive. And if anyone knows what kicks ass, it's him.